Hey y'all, uh, my name is Madigan. I use she, her pronouns and I work at CSU's Career Center. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you about interviewing today. So first things first, when you get the notification or email that you've gotten an interview, first of all, congrats, celebrate that success. Um, and then there are kind of four ways to start preparing for an interview um, ahead of time. So the first one is to anticipate some questions that you think might come up in the interview. Um, this can be done from a number of places. First and foremost, the job description, you know, given everything that you know about the job, what do you think they're likely to ask about? If you know communication skills is the number one qualification that they are listing on a job description, it might be likely that they're gonna ask about communication or for you to share an example of good communication um, in the job. So just kind of write down some questions that you could could see them asking. Um, you can also use sites like Handshake and Glassdoor where um, applicants who have applied in the past will actually share interview questions that they have gotten when they went through the interview process. Um, you could also do this in the form of themes, right? Don't have to anticipate specific questions, but what are some areas that you think they might ask about? Um, reflecting on your experiences. So they are certainly going to ask about your past experience, right? Both school and work related. So it's worth spending a little bit of time thinking about what have you done in the past? Um, what are maybe some significant experiences that stand out for you of times that you really excelled or maybe um, you got through a barrier really successfully? Um, but just thinking on, on your past experiences and being confident in your unique skills. Um, all of our experiences are different, right? Some folks have had a lot of really formal experiences. Some people have had some informal experiences, but all of those are really valuable. Um, and our confidence about the skill sets that we've acquired are going to help the employer feel more confident about us as an employee, right? So really developing that confidence. And I do have unique things to offer. I am you know, good at stuff. Here are some examples of times where I've really excelled or I've gotten really positive feedback. Um, it's worth spending some time on that. <laughs> uh, next, do your research. So um, I always tell folks like the question, you know, if they were to ask the question, what do you know about our organization? That one's really hard to make up on the spot. Um, whereas sometimes you can, you know, maybe talk through an answer to a question on the spot for other types of questions. That one, you have to have done the research beforehand. To know. And even if they don't ask that question, having done some research about the company or organization um, is really going to serve you well in the interview because you will find places to bring up what you know about them, right? Or that you um, took the time to really look into them. Um, and, and underneath that one, think of questions to ask them as well um, and questions that are not Googleable. So, you know, something like, what does your company do is something that you could probably find online. Um, but asking, you know, a more specific question of, I, I see you all are working on this project right now. Can you tell me what's been challenging about that or what you're looking forward to? Um, that's a really pointed question that like uses research, right? Um, and then the last one is to mock interview. Like this is just practice. Practicing interviewing can really up your chances of landing a job, of having a successful interview. Um, I think it's something that we think we'll be able to do pretty easily because we're just talking about ourselves, right? Um, but there are actually very few other situations in your life where people ask you to talk about yourselves and to, to share all of your positive attributes and your accomplishments. Um, it's, it's just not something we come across that often in our daily lives. So practicing, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It really, really makes a difference. Um, you, of course, can practice with a career center, but it doesn't have to be. You can practice with a close friend. You can even just practice in the mirror. You can record yourself answering questions. Um, but I do think it makes a big difference. <clears throat> okay, so I talked about um, Glassdoor being one of the places that you can look at what questions other applicants have had. So here's just um, an example of, you know, you searching a company name and where you would find the interview um, tab. Same thing on Handshake. Um, if you just search a company name specifically that you have an interview coming up for, um, click on the interview tab, you can read about what other people's experiences with interviewing with that company were like. <clears throat> okay, and then I really quickly want to talk about um, transferable skills because I, so I think sometimes folks say, well, I'm not sure what I would talk about, right? Um, I don't know what skills to emphasize, or maybe you just need to spend a little bit more time getting to know yourself better in terms of what are those things that you really bring to the table. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, just thinking about what do you what do you anticipate would be those top 10 skills that employers are seeking? What are they really looking for? 
So here are some data um, from 2013 and 2019, so only about six or seven years apart. Um, and you can see that there are some trends here, right, that, that don't really change. Employers are typically looking for the same types of skills all the time. That's communication, problem solving, teamwork, right, initiative, strong work ethic, leadership, technical skills, um, detail oriented, um, you know, able to uh, make decisions, organize, prioritize work, that kind of thing. So even if you haven't had, you know, what you might consider really formal, relevant work experience for what you're applying for, employers value this stuff so heavily. Um, I tell students all the time, there, there is no employer that would ever say, I don't want an employee who works hard, right? Or I don't want an employee who takes initiative. <laughs> um, those things are universally valued. So you can draw from whatever experiences you've had to think through what are some of those transferable skills that I have gained informally or formally that I can talk about in an interview setting, right? How can I talk about my communication, my problem solving skills? If you've had to overcome any obstacles, right? Um, it is much more impressive to have overcome an obstacle and worked through it than to have never faced an obstacle before, right? Employers want people who, um, who know how to work through challenges. Um, so just cataloging some of this stuff, right, of, of really taking a self inventory of, of your strengths and skill sets. Um, here's some examples of things if you're like I still don't really know what skills I could talk about, um, you know, take a screenshot of this or a picture and think through what skills have you developed through your experience at CSU, this could be as a student, could be as an employee, um, just during your time overall right in student organizations or whatever you've been a part of. Um, what are some of the things that you can <clears throat> not only talk about, but draw spe specific examples from? Um, I sometimes tell students that something that I do before um, interviewing is I, I make myself a hype me up document and um, where I really just trace out like, what are my what are my skills and strengths, right? What are some experiences that have been significant or accomplishments that have been significant? Um, what are some examples that I would share of working through a challenge of excelling at something of communicating well um, <clears throat> and just kind of having the sheet of like really all of the really great things about you and the things that would make you a great employee because it one helps build your confidence to do that and two has given you some specific things to share during an interview. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay so in terms of dressing for an interview um, for one thing, you know, a lot of interviews will be online or on Zoom now, so um, you may not necessarily have to be dressed head to toe for an interview, but um, in general, however makes you feel most comfortable and confident, um, right? There are a lot of different definitions of professional clothing, um, and I think in general, you know, better to overdress than to underdress for an interview, but if you feel uncomfortable and really, you know, overdress clothing, don't feel pressured to do that. Um, and I'll just say that, you know, if you want to acquire some career attire that you maybe don't have access to now, uh, we do have an interview attire fund at the Career Center. Um, and so if, um, you know, it would be a financial barrier to purchase clothing, um, you can access those funds, um, to acquire some things for yourself. But in general, right, there's no rules for how you necessarily have to be dressed for an interview, um, whatever makes you feel comfortable and confident and um, like you're kind of putting your best foot forward um, is what you should do. So when you are in the interview itself, right? And maybe some of you all have been through an interview process before. So you're kind of familiar with what, um, <clears throat> what it can look like. Sometimes it can be one-on-one, -on -one, you're with one person for a half hour. Sometimes it can be a panel interview where there's a couple of people interviewing you. Um, sometimes it can be like a few interviews back to back, right? Or maybe a phone interview, a video interview. There's lots of different types. Um, but by and large, here are some best practices that you can kind of take with you um, and think about as you're practicing interviewing in the future. So first is to be specific in your answers. Um, I think probably the number one mistake that I see folks um, do in interviews is just being way too vague in how they're describing um, their experiences, right? Um, if people are interviewing <clears throat> back to back, um, they're, they're going to remember stories and specific examples, right? They're not going to remember really generic phrases like, I think I have, you know, a really good set of skill sets that could fit really well into this role. It's just, it's not specific enough. It's not naming any skill sets. It's not saying how they would fit into the role. It's not providing any examples. It's not telling a story versus 
sharing some things that are kind of specific, those will actually stick with the interviewer, right? Allow them to picture something in their head while you're sharing um, about yourself. So on that same line, um, providing examples even when not prompted, and this is for the same reason that interviewing is storytelling, right? It's how did you get here? What passions are driving you? What are some significant experiences throughout your life up until this point? What do you see for yourself moving forward, right? Um, and providing examples really helps make that tangible. Um, so I always tell students that an example can only make your answer stronger. Um, but, you know, don't go on with like many, many examples that are going to drag out your answer, but just try to be specific and provide examples when you can. Like I said, I think this is where I see um, probably like the biggest um, barriers for students is just in being able to be specific and being able to provide examples. <clears throat> um, being confident in your skills and abilities. I talked about this earlier, but I can't emphasize it enough. Um, employers trust people who trust themselves to do the work well. And so you have to believe it, right? That you are capable of doing this work. Um, right. I just, I feel like students undersell themselves so often. And, and I have previously too, right? Of like, oh, well, you know, I was just to this or I was just to that. But like, there are so many valuable skills that you all have gained um, from being students, from other things that you've been involved in in your time as a student. Um, so really say, take some time to think about those and, and build some confidence in your own skills and abilities. Um, spend about one to two minutes on each question. No need to time yourself, but right, this is about uh, the length of an answer that is long enough to be specific, um, but not so long as to drag on. Um, answer what they're really asking. And by this, I just mean, um, you know, if they were to ask a question about, um, let's see, <clears throat> how have you handled conflict with a coworker in the past? Um, what they're or like, tell me about a conflict with a coworker in the past. What they're really asking about is how do you move through conflict, right? So um, focus the majority of your answer on how, on maybe not the conflict itself, explain it, absolutely, but how you move through the conflict, what you did, right, to, um, to get over that barrier. And if you don't have an example of a conflict with a coworker, if you have an example of a conflict with a supervisor or a classmate, right, the, what they're really asking about is conflict. So don't give up on the question. Um, think of the closest example you can and really focus on um, the part that they care about, which is your skill set, right? And how you would handle conflict in the future, what skill sets you have around conflict. Um, ask at least two to three questions of them. Almost every interview ends with what questions do you have for us? And the only wrong answer is none. Um, so write some questions down ahead of time. Um, you don't have to ask all of them, only ask as many as you have time for. Um, but do have at least two to three questions prepared. Send a thank you. Um, this will help you stand out from other applicants that don't send in a thank you. Like I said, if they're doing back-to-back -back interviews, it'll also kind of remind them about you and help remember your interview. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, you know, two to three days um, or one to two days after an interview, feel free to just send a quick email thank you. Um, you know, maybe re-emphasizing some of the things you shared or naming some specific things that you appreciated about the interview process. Um, but that can really mean a lot to employers. Um, and then lastly, be yourself, right? Um, if you are interviewing for a job where you are gonna have to spend a lot of your time, you wanna be able to show up um, as much your authentic self as you can. And there are different right, financial reasons why folks might, um, might want to um, do whatever they need to do to get a job versus um, be fully, fully authentic um, because they want to absolutely thrive in a, in a workplace environment. And both of those are valid. Um, but know that this is a place where you're going to spend a lot of time. And so being yourself throughout the interview process ensures that you can also be yourself at work, right? The interview process is not only for them to understand and get to know um, if they want you as an employee. It's also for you to know if you want to work there, right? If this is an environment where you can thrive, if these are people that are going to support you. Um, so it's really a two-way two street. So tell me about yourself. Um, this is the first question asked in about 99% of interviews. It can come in a couple of different versions. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself and your interest in this position. Um, you know, share, <clears throat> share your history and your interest in the position. So um, you might hear it a few different ways, but it is a question that is very frequently asked. So it is one that is worth practicing. Um, you know, see if you can in one to two minutes, share a summary of yourself. Um, I know for some folks, it's helpful to 
um, use the past, present, future structure to answer this question. So here's kind of what I've done so far. Um, here's what I'm currently working on or doing, and here's what I'm looking for in the future. Um, you don't have to use that, um, but do talk about your academic and professional history, right? Some of your goals and aspirations, um, and maybe share a little, you know, um, tidbit about you. Otherwise, maybe you're a marathon runner or something, um, but don't spend the majority of your answer on that kind of thing. You will want to keep the bulk of it about your sort of academic and career focus. Um, but this one is worth practicing. So again, in the mirror, videotaping yourself with a friend, whatever. Um, if we were live, I would have you all practice this with each other right now, but we aren't. So I would just encourage you all to practice on your own. <clears throat> Some other common questions you might hear in interviews um, are what is your biggest strength, big, biggest weakness, um, future career goals, what is unique about you, how would others describe you, you can always look up to common interview questions. Um, you can look up common interview questions for your specific industry and just kind of just Google it, right? And see what questions are common. Um, but just knowing that even if it's not directly stated, the end to every question is, and how does it, that relate to this job specifically? So really tailoring your answers to what you know is important to them based on the job description and, and the responsibilities of the role, right? So <clears throat> if you're applying for um, an administrative position saying that your biggest weakness is organization is probably going to be a deal breaker because <laughs> that's a big responsibility of that role, right? Versus um, sharing something that, you know, is, is honest. You know, they really want to know that the weakness question is, is really about do you have self-awareness of areas you need to work on? So be honest, um, but something that maybe isn't a deal breaker or isn't an essential skill um, to the role itself. <clears throat> Okay, so behavioral questions um, come in the form of tell me about a time when or provide an example of. Um, and so this is when employers are asking you specifically to share an example, right? Um, and this is why I'm thinking up some, some examples from your past of times that you've excelled or worked through um, a barrier or had to make a tough decision or, you know, um, we're, we're in a leadership position. Um, Thinking about that stuff ahead of time can be helpful when answering these questions. So tell me about a time when, um, and then some common things they might ask about are communication, teamwork, decision-making, diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, ethics and integrity, leadership, or conflict. Um, and when answering a behavioral question, um, we tend to recommend the STAR method. Um, and I have Cam the Ram here because Cam is a STAR. Um, which starts with talking about the situation in general, the specific task um, that you were working on, the action that you took. Um, so not necessarily what a group member did or you know, what you all did together, but what specifically you did, <clears throat> the result, and maybe some lessons learned or takeaways from the situation. So um, you know, this is kind of a cute acronym. Essentially, it's just storytelling, right? Set the scene, what was, what was going on? What were you working on? What was the conflict? Um, what was the action? How did things get resolved? And then what did you kind of take away from it moving forward? So um, you can practice this on, on a couple of different types of questions. Um, again, we won't practice this because we're not live, um, <clears throat> but if you would like to on your own, pause right here and practice these questions. Um, here are three examples of behavioral questions. Tell me about a time you worked with a team to achieve a common goal. Tell me about a time you communicated effectively with a customer, client, or coworker in a difficult situation. <clears throat> Tell me about a time you faced a problem or roadblock at work and how you problem solved effectively. So like I said, feel free to pause and, and practice these questions on your own. All right. <clears throat> so lastly, um, remember that interviewers are people and interviews are conversation. So, you know, there, there can, feel like this huge sense of power dynamics. And in some sense there is, right? There are definitely power dynamics when interviewing. Um, <clears throat> and at the end of the day, like this is your process to find out if this is a place you wanna work. I always tell students recruiters need you as employees just as much as employees need jobs, right? Organizations cannot run <laughs> without employees. So they want you, right? And, um, and they want people to work for them. They need people to work for them. So. Um, Make sure that you're just using this as an opportunity to get to know them, um, to ask the questions that you want to ask. Um, and we can be, you can be strategic about timing in terms of when you ask certain questions. 
Um, but this is this is a two way street, right? It's it's for you to get some information for yourself as well about whether this is going to be a safe, healthy, positive workplace for you. Um, big interview is a resource that I just wanted to share um, on uh, which you can find on the Career Center's website. If you were just to search big interview um, or in the resource center, you can find it. But it's kind of an interactive tool um, where you can learn about interviewing best practices. You'll see there's a tab up there that also says practice so that it can it has kind of an automated person that will prompt questions and you can practice answering them. Um, <clears throat> that's a really good tool. It's something that CSU pays for. So um, you do have access to it as a student and is worth checking out if you want a little bit more practice with interviewing. So um, also want to talk about navigating identity a little bit and sussing out employers. And by that sense, I mean, you know, I've talked about so far making sure that um, a workplace is a place where you are safe, where you can be yourself, um, where you're surrounded by people that will support you. Um, <clears throat> and so one of the really important parts of the interview process is um, finding out and asking intentional questions around whether this is a workplace um, that is gonna be a positive experience for you. So um, in terms of navigating identity, you know, throughout the job search process, it is up to you what you wanna share with an employer and when. And I mean that straight from the resume, right? You do not have to share um, any aspect of your identity on your resume if you don't want to, if you're worried about bias. Um, on the other hand, you're welcome to share everything about yourself on your resume um, if you wanna make sure that that's not gonna be a barrier for an employer, right? Um, it's becoming more common for folks to share pronouns on resumes. Um, you might be part of a student organization that is identity-based. Um, so. There's no you know, rules that you have to put the exact name of an organization on your resume if you don't want to. You don't have to put your exact address on a resume. It is up to you what you want to share with an employer and when. Um, same thing goes for like disclosing a disability. Um, in the job search process, you can disclose that right away or you can wait until the job offer, right? To ask for accommodations and that kind of thing. So um, if you wanna talk more in depth about kind of like when to share parts of your identity, um, specifically if you're needing to request accommodations or something with an employer, please come talk to someone at the Career Center and we can talk through um, just kind of the more, the more specifics of your situation and what feels most safe and comfortable for you. Um, during the interview process itself, uh, know that there are both inappropriate and illegal interview questions, um, which is that, which basically means that at any point in the interview process, they should be, not be asking about any part of your identity. Um, it is illegal to do so. <clears throat> it's also not always on purpose. Um, so sometimes, right, you might be at like a lunch or something. They'll be like, oh, you know, where are you from? Or um, do you have any kids or that kind of thing? And so people don't always mean to ask um, illegal or inappropriate questions about during the interview process, but they might do it anyway. And um, it's just important for you all to know that you have rights and you're not obligated to answer those questions, especially if you are worried about bias um, in the job search process. Um, in terms of finding inclusive, inclusive employers, and by this I mean, right, like sussing employers out, um, there's a couple of strategies to use. And I'll say that the interview process is probably one of um, the places where you get to have access to the most in-depth information by being able to ask the questions that you really want to ask. Um, so just a couple of ideas in terms of researching employers. Um, look at their social media and their equality index. Um, so that's just kind of like online. Um, like the, the equality index will kind of rank companies in terms of what their employers report, right? In terms of their experience for working at the company. Um, on social media, you know, have they spoken out about different social issues? Have they been relatively quiet? Um, you know, what kind of, honestly, and, and also kind of what's your gut reaction, right? What kind of vibes are you getting um, from looking at the content that they have put out into the world? Um, look for a non-discrimination policy or better yet a commitment to diversity and inclusion. So a non-discrimination policy is sort of like the legal minimum um, for organizations. So um, a commitment to diversity and inclusion that is visible on a web page um, or maybe right they even share more in depth like what that commitment to diversity and inclusion looks like. Um, really see if you can find this um, online or in their materials. Um, you know, and if, if you can't find it, absolutely ask about it in the interview process. Um, meeting employers at a diversity focused event. So we put on Diversity Connect every semester um, with employers that are really um, looking to improve their inclusive practices and not only um, to recruit folks with diverse identities, but really make their workplaces um, diverse, equitable, and inclusive. And so they 
are actively working on it, right? That doesn't mean that any workplace is perfect by any means, right? Um, there's work to be done in every organization, um, but we do, you know, connect with some of the employers that we know have been doing the work and putting the effort in. Um, ask intentional questions in your interview. And this is something that um, I'll emphasize a lot specifically in this interview portion um, is ask those questions you want to know the answers to. And there are, there are varying degrees, right, that you can ask of, of um, you know, maybe, maybe your question is as direct as um, how do you support employees with disabilities? Um, right, or how do you um, support LGBTQ employees? Um, or you could ask a more general version of how do you promote a diverse and inclusive workplace? What are your company's commitments to diversity and inclusion, right? And their answers to these types of questions are gonna tell you a lot about whether this is something they've even thought about at all or something that they have been committed to and working on and have active programming and um, yeah, are, are really working on it, right? <clears throat> And then lastly, talk to people who already work there. So um, if you have access or you know folks that have worked there before, ask them what their experience has been like. Um, you can find people on LinkedIn that currently work there that maybe even share some identities with you and find out what their experience has been like, um, you know, at the organization, but maybe also in like that city or that part of the world. Because um, <clears throat> I think if you can find folks that have worked there in the past or currently do, that's where you're gonna get some of the most honest information about what that company culture is really like. So, you know, just thinking through what questions might be asking an employee um, player during an interview um, or an employee during an informational interview, right, where you're just kind of asking them about their experience to find out about the work environment and culture. So think through on your own, maybe some questions that you might want to ask that are maybe specific to your identities or your values, things that are really important to you. Um, <clears throat> and this can be specific to identity or not, right? It could be, you know, what is the work-life balance here? You know, realistically, are employers working 40 hours or are they working 80 hours? Um, so really thinking about what's important to you um, or, or, you know, how do you all support um, maybe parents, um, you know, folks who have kids in the workplace, how is that um, supported? So think about what's important to you in your own personal journey and, and search <clears throat> and write down some questions um, that you might feel comfortable asking during an interview or comfortable asking an employee. <clears throat> so that's all I have about interviewing. I will say I can't encourage you all enough to practice interviewing and to meet with um, someone from the Career Center to talk about your specific industry, right? The jobs that you're gonna be interviewing for to get a little bit more personalized support. So absolutely come see us if you want to talk further about interview prep strategies or to do a mock interview. Um, we're located in the LSC in the basement, <clears throat> um, but you can also access us virtually online. I do tons of online appointments. So um, aside from interviewing, um, there are lots of things the Career Center can help with, and I'll let you kind of read through these on your own. Feel free to pause here. Um, but folks sometimes don't think of us for things like graduate school um, or, you know, self-assessments, um, but absolutely we're able to do that kind of stuff as well. So we have drop-ins Monday through Friday, 10 to 2, um, or you can schedule a full-time appointment with a career educator, um, which if you feel like you have a little bit more in-depth questions, or if you want to do a full mock interview, I would go ahead and schedule a full appointment. Um, that's something you could also email me about directly and my email will be on the last slide um, if you're having trouble finding time um, to set up something online. So my email is down there. Um, if you want to shoot me an email, you know, absolutely just say that you watch this video um, and you want to set up some time to talk through um, your specific interview strategies or anything else related to your job search. Um, it can be really scary to be job searching for the first time for um, you know, full-time work, or even if you're just looking for something over the summer, um, you are already paying for the career center through tuition and fees. So um, please utilize us. We want to help you. We're here to help you. Um, and good luck to you all. All right. Thanks.